At CES 2025, there were a few surprises, but none bigger than the RGB backlit LED TVs. And these are going to be pretty interesting to watch out for in 2025. Of course, the biggest announcement at CES 2025 from Hisense was the 116 inch RGB mini LED TV that they have. And this is a pretty cool TV overall. I got to see it firsthand. Hisense is saying this has got better color than QD OLED. And in the past, QD OLED has had the best color out of all the TVs that I've seen personally. And I think, you know, when you look at the color that you're getting from QD OLED, it is really great. It's nice, it's bright, it's vibrant, and it doesn't seem to lose any color at higher brightness levels. And that's been the problem for both LCD TVs and WOLED TVs. But when it comes down to the LED versus OLED discussion, there's still going to be the problem of is it going to be able to show you the specular highlights the same way as an OLED TV? And I think all of that is still up for debate on whether or not it's going to be worth it to go with an LED TV over an OLED TV. They're quoting something like 10,000 nits on the Hisense and that was something that did kind of catch me off guard. I was expecting to see the UX line, but I didn't expect it to be this trichroma RGB backlit TV that they're talking about in 2025. So really awesome stuff from Hisense. And you can see in the footage that it does look really colorful and really bright. They did show you what was behind the scenes with the backlight itself and seeing the RGB backlight work. So it was nice to see what this trichroma backlight was really doing for the Hisense 116 inch. Now, when it comes down to the RGB mini LED TV that Hisense has, it is a really good looking TV, but the unfortunate part about this is it's only available in the 116 inch size and maybe even a 100 or 98 inch size. And that to me is just a little bit too ambitious for the market right now. There's a subset of people that are going to be buying this kind of TV, sure, but the size is not going to be appropriate for everybody. And I think that's the biggest problem with a lot of what was announced at CES is we have these ultra large TVs, but not a lot of people have the space for it. To be honest with you, I know I personally don't have a space for a 116 inch TV. And then the other thing goes to the price tag. In 2025, I doubt a lot of people wanna spend this kind of money or have this kind of money to spend on a TV. So it really feels like it's only for a certain amount of people and it's really only going to hit a certain target audience in the first place. And if you're spending a lot of money on a TV, there's a chance that you might end up going with an OLED TV as in the past it has proven to have superior picture quality overall in regards to the biggest factor when it comes down to TVs and that is contrast. It's something to watch out for though. This is a really impressive TV and what I saw at CES, I really did like what I saw. It did seem like the colors were nice, vibrant, and beautiful. And that goes to the next one that I saw as well. And that one was from Samsung. This is an RGB micro LED TV. So not like the RGB mini LED TV I just talked about. Now it does function in a similar way, but instead of mini LED, you have a micro LED backlit TV. And this is going to be RGB micro LED backlit. And this is going to essentially be better than many LED TV, but work in a similar fashion. So it's not like the micro LEDs that you know from Samsung where it's going to be self-emissive and these are going to be panels that you put together. No, this is an actual fully functioning TV. I saw it firsthand and I really was amazed by what Samsung had on the show floor itself. The colors definitely did stick out and I know that the TV was probably in some sort of vivid mode. So it's hard to kind of judge the purity of the colors and how good the colors are overall. But to me, it did stick out. The colors were brighter than most of the other TVs there and it just did kind of hit a different way. So there's a lot of color pop with these TVs. And for me personally, I really do see the draw to these RGB backlit TVs. And the RGB micro LED TV is certainly intriguing and I can't wait to see more of it in the near future. They're saying that 
it's probably going to come out in 2025, although nothing is guaranteed. And from what I heard, there's going to be a 75 inch and an 85 inch version of these TVs in 4K and also a 98 inch version in 8K. So something to watch out for from Samsung in 2025. But again, how expensive is it going to be? I'm hearing it's going to be a little bit more expensive than the 8K Neo QLED line. That's already a pretty expensive line. So can't go too much higher Samsung or you definitely will be pricing a lot of people out in my opinion. So you have Hisense and Samsung releasing in 2025, but you also have TCL who showed off a mini LED RGB backlit TV. But from what I gathered, TCL is not ready to release this TV just yet. It seems like it's more of a concept than anything else. So it's really just the Hisense and the Samsung that potentially will launch this year in 2025. For me, when it comes down to these TVs, it's going to be interesting how the backlight is actually going to perform. It'll be interesting to watch what kind of downsides come with these TVs. Are we going to see a similar downside like all the other local dimming based TVs? Or are we going to see improvements on that front as well? I know when you compare an LED TV to an OLED TV, you're definitely going to see when you get into darker scenes, the highlights are definitely going to lose that same appeal, that same pop that you can get from an OLED TV. And I think that's kind of been my biggest detractor when we're talking about OLED versus LCD TVs. If you add more individual zones, then maybe you can get closer and closer to bridging the gap. I mean, we saw the Sony Bravia 9, it got closer than ever to an OLED TV for a mini LED TV. And I think the TVs that we see this year are going to get even better than that. So it's something to watch out for in 2025. Will that gap between LCD and OLED start to close even more? Because now we're even seeing that color is starting to close the gap a little bit with these TVs as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you guys want to keep watching 2025 TV coverage, definitely check out this video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next one.